Hi guys, Ali Watchek here. I'm so sorry for the technical glitch. Clearly, um, hopefully this connection stays on and we could keep talking about what I wanted to talk to you about, um, which is customer experience and customer journey mapping. And again, this is a big, big thing that I've been meaning to do for quite some time and I'm really excited to finally be sharing with you what customer experience looks like, what it means, how can you apply it in your business successfully, and what would that result um, in applying it in your business? So what are the results that you would get out of um, a successful implementation, and how then does your customers will feel after you have successfully utilized customer experience techniques and, and, and empathy and design thinking in order to connect to your customers and get those profits that you need in your business. So um, a lot of you people from the previous live, um, Facebook live, but hopefully you guys please join again. Um, but I'll continue talking to you guys now. So basically what I wanted to do today is just to give you a little bit of information on customer experience. So a bit of a customer experience one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and really what customer experience is, is all of the interactions between a brand and a customer. And if you think about yourself as a customer, so what do you feel um, and, and think when you engage with a brand and even before you engage with a brand? So if we put if you put yourself in your customer in your customer shoes, that would be what information and they're looking for before they engage with your brand. So what what does that discovery research phase looks like? What happens? Um, afterwards, so once you have engaged with your brand, what are, what are the things that they're feeling and they're thinking? And what happens what, once you know, they have committed to, they're committed to your brand and they have used your brand and what happens afterwards? So once you have to retain those customers or hopefully make sure that they're not going anywhere else. So really there are a lot of emotional and psychological connections that happened between your brand and your customers. And we don't think, um, of them um, very regularly, but it's really important that we understand that there's a lot of things that someone thinks about and feels about when they engage with your brand. And there are a lot of things that we feel when we walk into a store, for example. So what is that? In, what does that environment look like? Is it inviting? Is it not very inviting? Even when we think of um, the online channels and platforms that we have, what does your website look like? Is your social media um, quite inviting and friendly or, or strategic or um, opinion, opinionated, whatever it is? What does that environment make someone feel like? Um, and things like the product, you know, how does the product make me feel like? Um, is it staff friendly? Um, is it customer service I'm receiving um, something that I'm, I'm, I was expecting? I'm quite delighted. So what does that look like? There is a lot of research clearly around customer experience, but most recently SAP did a great, um, a great digital transformation report here in Australia. And what they talked about was about um, was around how advocacy will be highly driven by the customer experience you provide to your customers. They talked about that delighted customers will be more likely, about 68% more likely, to be advocates for your brand. So what an advocate does is that they will refer your business to their families and to their friends. And clearly that's a great retention strategy for you because you don't need to worry about or getting new customers all the time. You have, a, you are already providing a great experience to your current customers. So those new customers will be coming as worth of mouth. And, and, and Jeff Bessos from Amazon, he has a great um, statement around this. He said, if you provide a great experience, those customers will refer you to other people. And that's the best marketing strategy and clearly of almost free marketing budget um, then and there. The other thing that they talked about is that if someone is not satisfied, um, they will be just 40% likely to be an advocate for your brand so they probably won't be referring referring you to their families and friends um and in terms of loyalty um the unsatisfied customers they will just be 16 percent um, more loyal to your brand so they will be definitely be moving to um a different brand or service or product just because they're not um they're not you're not meeting their expectations and i think it is very important to think that we are on the customer's age by Forrester, there is a lot of research and they talked about now, since 2010, roughly, it's all about the customers. The customers need to feel that they have the power, that they are in control, and 
it's no longer about the brand, it's no longer about your product, whether it's good or not. If you are not meeting the customer's expectations and you're not making them feel in control, and that will right, right away will, will not be um, a great experience um, to your clients and customers. Um, in terms of uh, what are the expectations, in, in terms of this report that SAP did recently, they talked about how websites um, or customer service or data, for example, was really, really important. So being feeling that you're jumping on a website and feeling that your data is safe and secure, that was really important. The other thing that was really important was around availability and um, and, seam and a seamless experience. So when we say seamless experience, it's really um, about the experience that you provide on different platforms and channels. So that could be your customer service team that, you know, once they're on the phone with a customer, what does that look like on your website? Is it similar? Is it just, you know, completely disconnected? What is the experience that you're providing on your social media platforms? Is, is, that, is that disconnected from your email campaigns? So everything needs to be seamless. It's like if you are, um, you know, Ali, and <laughs> I'm just giving an example, and you are just being very friendly to some people and then very rude and, 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 and nasty to some others, people are just a bit confused and people just don't have time to deal with confuse. So you need to be very seamless and consistent and provide that safety um, and secure experience that customers are needing these days. Um, the other things that clearly customer experience brings is, is retention, as we mentioned. So there, there is a lot of research that talks about that if your customers are engaging with you and they feel that they're getting the experience, they will be 80% more likely to stay with you. Um, and 40% actually say that um, they will also refer you to, the, to, to, other, to other people just, be, just by providing their experience that they, they are expecting. Um, a few tips as to what, how you can fix your customer experience in your business and, and it's just really at understanding what your customers are going through and really putting yourself in, your, in their shoes and, and just having that empathy. Um, I think if you're coming from a place of empathy, that would really give a lot of value um, right away. So you would feel that you're feeling what your customers are feeling. You would think what your customers are thinking. And, and that is just so powerful. That will give you definitely great insights as to what your customers need from you. And it would really give you those aha moments that you, you didn't have before. And no one else... Um, knows your customers better than you do. So you definitely need to sometimes um, either talk to your customers, engage with them, ask them simple questions about their experience with you, um, and, and, and really get their honest feedback. There is nothing better than constructive feedback. I think the worst feedback that we can get is not feedback at all. So if you ask the right questions, if you just simply ask them, what's the number one problem that you can solve for them? Um, and if you have, and they answer that, and if you're feeling, you feel that you're answering and you're um, solving that problem, clearly you're really, you're really ahead of, um, ahead in the customer experience game. So that's really good. Um, the other thing that you need to look about, uh, look at, look at is um, your speed. So what that means is how quickly you're moving in the digital space, how fast is your website. Um, people just have no time to waste and definitely that is something that I see every single time when your mobile experience is not optimized so it takes way too long to jump on a, on a, on a, on a mobile site clearly if your website is not responsive that's you know it's something that it shouldn't even be happening in 2016 however that happens quite a lot um, so those are things that you definitely need to look at. If you're not getting back to your customers in a timely manner after they have put a complaint or, or, or even um, it sent um, some nice words to you, you just need to reply to people in a timely manner and, and ensure that, um, that you're doing that, you know, within 24 hours, within six hours, within 48 hours, whatever it is, but you have those policies in place so you know exactly that, you know, replying to a customer on Facebook, 48 hours, that's just way too long. That people just, their expectations are just 
I need an answer like in the next hour max. So um, have those policies in place and definitely that will really help um, articulate your customer experience in terms of service and speed. The other thing is to be simple and to be relevant. You don't want to be complicated. You don't want to make things complicated. You really want to make things simple. And a really easy way to do that is to, rather than say, well, this is my product, this is what we do, is more looking at the other person's problems. So say you can understand what the other person is going through in terms of you know their, their, their problems in their lives or their businesses. And you really take that approach. So you really take like an outside-in approach rather than an inside-out approach. So you're right then and there being customer centric, you're providing a great experience, but just really keep getting that empathy going in your business. And, and just by really um, being very simple in the words that you use, you know, in the content that you do um, put together for your social media platforms on your blogs, you're being very specific and you really get into that number one problem that you have your customers. So for that, you clearly need to know your customers really well. You need to talk to them. You need to understand understand them well enough. You probably might have to carry out some um, some research if you haven't, um, just to really get some ideas as to how they're feeling and what they're thinking. Um, so those are things that you can really do very very well. Omnichannel, and I'm and I'm a big advocate for omnichannel strategies. And I know omnichannel is a really really big, bossy marketing type type word but um omnichannel what really is is providing the same experience across every channel and we talked about that um consistency that we need but if you're not doing that people are just gonna they're just not they just don't have the time they will move away um and it is important that you at least understand what does that look like in your business and how a seamless experience could look like whether you're a tiny business, whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're a large organization and you have a lot of teams and a lot of people and a lot of systems and, and back ends. What does that what does that could look like in terms of driving that customer centricity? Um, one of the other things that I would definitely highlight is um, identify the journeys that your customers go through. So we talked a little bit about um, getting to know your customers, doing a little bit of research. So really identifying their journeys is the is the next is the next phase. So understand your customers is really about getting to know them um, personally and and articulate your personas. Some people call them avatars, whatever you want to call them. But those personas are key and they become like a pair of glasses that you put on once you put those pair of glasses you're like okay so i need to talk to lucy and she is 35 years old she lives with her husband and her two kids and she is a marketing professional and she works for a retail a retail store um and these are the challenges that she's going through these are her pain points so those are those lenses that you put on so you become Lucy. You understand Lucy. You are Lucy's friend. You get to know her so well that you can even provide the experience that they need before they even think about it. And some there are some creepy examples, and I think some of you might know how Target um, in the U.S. a few years back sent um, a very a very creepy email to to a girl who happened to be pregnant. She was 16 at a time, and the father didn't know that she was pregnant. So that was clearly a bit creepy. It's just a lot of the data that goes that goes through um, all of the transactions and how really um, you can really understand your customers and articulate what they need before they need it. So those are things that um, that you can do. Um, in terms of the the value that you can provide as well by identifying these, these journeys is getting those aha moments in place. So if you really look at your um, pre-awareness phase, so that discovery, that research, and then you look at that, you know, current engagement, um, which is, you know, a bit of that um, preference. And then once they, obviously you're keeping your customers so that a bit of, of retention what does that journey look like across all of your channels and what are the potential touch points that you can put in place to enhance the experience that they already have with you now i understand that a lot of us 
um, and a lot of business owners, they feel that they're already given a lot, a great experience, but believe me, that's probably wrong. There was a massive research done where just 8%, um, 80% of CEOs um, said that they believe, they genuinely believe they're providing one of the best ex customer experiences um, and just 80, just 8% 8 of customers agreed. If you're not asking your customers if they definitely feel that you're providing a great experience and if it's just your, um, your, your organization who feels they're providing a great experience, you, then you're probably not doing the right thing. You need to understand what are those pain points that they, your customers are going through. You need to really articulate a great way to delight them, keep them, keep them with you, give them a lot of value provide that experience that they're expecting. So it's not longer, um, it's definitely not longer about um, giving the experience that they need, it's giving the experience that they want. So that is really important. And that's just, just really shifting um, our mindset um, around customer empathy and customer centricity. Um, Another way that you can implement customer experience in your business is just being by having a very clear way of communicating with your customers. So if you're going to be friendly, if you're going to be strategic, if you're going to be professional, those are tone of voices that you can articulate in your business fairly quickly and you can understand your branding really well. So you say, well, I want my customers to feel warm when they speak to me and I want them to feel that they're talking to a friend who is a little bit more knowledgeable. So how do you want your customers to feel? And you need to ensure that that communication is really, really clear in all of your content, in all of your marketing, in all of your posting on everything that you do. That is really, really key. Um, another really important factor is customer service. So customer service is probably the number one factor in customer experience. And customer service is something that you do across every touch point, across all of your channels, and across all of these, all of these steps of a customer's journey. A lot of companies made the big mistake of just pro providing a great customer experience either at that very beginning, once um, those customers are like about to become your customers but not, not ready yet, and, and at that very beginning phase, and maybe a little bit in the middle, but not so much towards the end. And that is really, really bad. Um, the customer experience that you provide to someone who isn't yet your customer, to someone who is your customer and someone who has left your business and used to be a customer should be exactly the same. If you're not giving that, it's almost feeling, well, if you're not joining my party, then too bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be nice to you anymore. So that's what customers really feel. So you need to be consistent in that delivery and that customer service needs to be articulated across every channel, as I mentioned, but also across, it needs to be embedded in your culture and in your staff. Um, I was just a few days, um, you know, in Kmart, just getting, you know, a couple of things for the kids and I was struggling. I had my two kids, I had a pram, I needed someone to help me get a trolley from the other side of the store and, you know, this, this staff member just said, oh yeah, you can go get it. It just, it just, he could just definitely have made a call to customer service and say, hey, I've got a lady here who's got two kids with her and she's got a few big boxes. Can you, can, can someone bring a trolley for her? And, and if it's just that moment of empathy, that moment of understanding what the other person is going through, I would guarantee you, I will be so much happier um, by the service that was given to me, and I will be I will be talking about it to people. I'll, I'll be now what I'm saying to people is like you know what a horrible experience I, I I got when I was like, you know clearly with with my hands full. So you really need to provide that customer experience, and your staff needs to, need, need to be the advocates for that. Um, also, another thing that I will talk about is efficiency. So all of your platforms and channels need to be highly efficient and they need to work not just from the outside, they need to also work on the inside of your business. So your back end needs to be clearly pretty efficient. You know, if you have dodgy and outdated, out of date, um, oh, sorry, dated um, back end systems and CMS systems, that's, that's a big, you know, 
it is a big deal because it's going to make your systems very slow. It's probably it's probably affecting your front end as well and how your your platforms are looking and 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 and, and engaging in terms of the experience that they're providing to your customers. How how the speed on your website, whether it's mobile or not. It's also been, um, and yeah, the efficiency across all your channels. I think that's that's really key. Um, definitely, efficiency, customer service, communication, the value that you're giving your customers, how prompt you are towards your customer, um, how simple you can be, how you need to know your customers, how you need to identify what your customers are going through in their journeys, is absolutely key in understanding in providing that customer experience that w would ultimately give that re that will drive that retention and will drive those profits in your business um there is a really great um um statement and i will leave you guys with this and we're about to finish is that just by having but just by retaining five percent of your customers that would increase your company's um, profitability by 70 percent and just imagine just 5% of your customers, if you keep those customers, that will drive 70% of your profits. That is massive. And it's such an easy task to do as long, as long as you take the time to really get to know your customers from the get-go. We tend to jump right away into you know, the social media posts that you need to do and what the website, the website needs to look like. And we really tend to forget that going back to basics is, is key. So I hope you guys enjoy um, this chat today. And obviously, if you have any, any questions, um, feel free to send them through anytime. Um, we're going to be running some customer journey mapping sessions um, here in Brisbane, some workshops on the 8th and the 15th of December. So if you're keen to join those, please feel free. They are limited to, to four, business, um, four businesses, so we could definitely on the day articulate your customer journey mapping, uh, customer journey maps for your top two personas. So that's really exciting. You're going to walk away with a great understanding on cost of customer experience. And also very, like very important, you're going to walk away with a blueprint of those customer journeys for your current customers. There's a lot of validation that we can do beforehand or after the workshops in terms of the research that needs to be done, in terms of the information that we need to gather, just to ensure that those customer journey maps are validated. We don't want to walk away with something that we just made up and doesn't make sense. And it, it just, you know, a big, a big um, hypothesis. We just really need to ensure that what we created on the day is exactly what your customers are going through. So definitely that's something that we do at Square One and we can help you guys um, in, in doing that, that validation. But again, I hope you enjoyed this session today. Sorry about the technical glitch again. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but I will be chatting to you guys very, very soon. And as I said, if you've got any cues, I'll be happy to, to answer them all. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.